We're kicking off this week's show with Jackie Cruz, who I've been trying to get in the show forever, so I'm glad that our schedule finally the line. But she plays the amazing Marisol Gonzalez, um, a.k.a. Flocka, on Orange is the New Black. Take a look at Jackie in action. We're going to kill that interview like I did job fan. But you lost job fan. Yeah, but this time there won't be an audience, so they won't get all, like, PC and give it to that fat Mayate so she don't get all signed. Gloria's right, though. It's good all of us together. Who knows who they'll stick in to replace you? What if she's mean or likes Coldplay or something? It's all gelling right now. So I'm supposed to put on that fail hairnet and scrub pots and pans every day because it's gelling? I'm so much better than that. You saying you're better than me? No, you're good too. All I'm saying is that I got aspirations. I always have, even in here. You know when I wear that apron in the kitchen? I'm really wearing it ironically. And I'm so happy to welcome to So Popular, Jackie Cruz. Hi, thank Hi. you so much for having me. Thank you for being here. I just love the friendship between Flaca and um, Diane Guerrero's character. Yeah. It's just one of the most special kind of things that you get to see on TV. How is it totally. playing, playing with her? I mean, you? we're kind of best friends in real life as well <laughs> so it's really awesome to like have this journey with her and like sit next to her at the SAG Awards and hold her hand and like like we're real friends and that's why like I guess you see it on on camera mm -hmm. we have real chemistry so did you meet in person or no it was, oh, we wow. met on the show Wow. Yeah and I was like who's that pretty girl and then um, <laughs> we started you know our first we had a a scene um, about the Smiths uh, with the radio thing, mm -hmm. and they saw that, and we clicked, and I guess they kept writing for us. So. Blanca is so not like a stereotypical like Latina when you yes. think about it. Like yes. she loves the Smiths. Her yes, eyeliner is mode. super, super on point and interesting. Yep. Um, she's kind of like this emo part about her. What attracted yeah. you to her when you first um, read it? That right there, that she's. At first, I thought she was um, stereotyped, but she really isn't. Um, she listens to 80s rock, and like she's not afraid to say it. And um, she had she likes to stand out and be different with her makeup or whatever. I, I feel like we connect a lot because yeah. um, I'm also in love with music. And I know initially she actually, um, I think when you first read the script, I think I read this somewhere that she was just named like Feisty Latina. Feisty like that was Latina. her description. That's it. That's and she why wasn't I thought, supposed to be on much, right? No, mm -mm. That's why I thought she was going to be stereotyped. I'm like, oh, a chola or whatever. But no, she's not. She's so much more than that. And um, I, I'm so happy that she slowly evolved. And I got to know her just like you got to know her slowly. Because I didn't know anything until like season three. When I read the episode, I didn't even know what was happening. I was like, oh, this is so awesome. I know so. her season three is really is your breakout yeah. season. Like you get, we get Flocka's backstory. We get to see yeah. how she got in there, which is always some of the most powerful writing that Jin Jin, her team, of yes. course, does on the show. And you also leave season three as now a series regular. Yeah. What are the perks of that? Mm, I get picked up in the morning. <laughs> I usually take in car service. No, well, sometimes if there's enough, because you know there's like 80 of us. But um, I, yeah, I used to take the the subway, and um, now I get picked up sometimes. Tony, he drives me. I love him. Um, that's one of the perks. <laughs> I don't know. That is, no, that is a major perk. Like to think about, you can just like relax. Someone is there to grab you and fetch you and chauffeur, yeah. chauffeur you through through the entire thing. What I also um, love about her specifically is the sense of like unfairness that comes when we when we do discover her backstory. I don't want to give. Yeah too much away about season three just yeah. in case you're way too late but yeah. <laughs> um how did you feel when you read that like off of the paper and then had to bring that alive so funny um i'm like are you guys psychic because my family they make clothes so it was really funny i was like i grew up like with them trying to my mom trying to teach me how to sew my mom millie and i'm like i don't want to do that you know so it's really funny how i was like how did you guys know that but they didn't and um it was really heartbreaking to find out that like she wanted to be more than what she was and then I feel like she was in prison for lying like mm -hmm. she's a teenager and she didn't, wasn't hurting anybody so the system is so messed up I mean yeah so we don't know what happened to the kid or whatever but um I just when when she had to go you know in the finale I, I was really heartbroken like what you see it was my real reaction to feeling like wow she wanted to be more than this and this is what she 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 is 
So and I was did you, really when you when you initially um, read the script and you saw that there would be a lot of women of color behind bars and telling their stories specifically, did you have any like personal reservations at all, or was the writing it just stood out so much that you were just like, I need to be a part of this period? Well, I didn't know what I was getting myself into. I was like, Netflix? I don't even have Netflix. I'm like, we forget what, that. What though, is right? Orange Is the New Black? What does that mean? So I read the book, you know, after I found out, and I was like, wow, this is something that needs to be told. I didn't know after season one that they were going to go into, you know, other characters and find out their story. So I just thought that was really, like, smart, and and this is so important. Like, I feel like everyone connects with each character. They're like, oh, I know a girl like that. Oh, and it's like, you know, it's, it's real. That's why people are like... I love that, like, before maybe people would judge, oh, she was in prison, oh, you know, they would judge you for that. But I like that you get to see the person and what was behind her. You know, people make mistakes. Some are caught and some are not. So I love that. Yeah, I, um, I think about the unexpected nature of caring about people that we're not supposed to care about anymore, yeah. right? And something that's really unexpected about you that many people may not know is that you are a musician. I know yes. that you said that you initially fell, I think you were growing up in Dominican Republic yeah. and you saw the bodyguard team <laughs> yeah. in Houston and yeah. you're just like, oh my God. I it was dubbed in Spanish. I mean, yeah, it was dubbed in Spanish and she sang in English and I, on my walk home, my mom was carrying my little brother and I said, I want to I wanna be like that girl on, on the big screen. And then um, she started putting me into vocal lessons and acting classes and she moved me to Hollywood at 15 and to become an actress. That's amazing. Yeah, That's she amazing. changed her whole life for me. But not just her, you know, all her sisters helped out too. It's amazing when a parent listens to a young person's mm -hmm. dream, their, their, their child's dreams, and yeah. like, you know, stands fully behind them. That's amazing. It doesn't really happen. I feel very lucky. Yeah, and do you, you have plans for a new EP, I hear. What's, what can we expect? Yeah, um, I don't know. Like, I, I don't care if I make a dollar out of music. I just love to sing. Like, I sing around, like, in New York, like, The Bitter End, you know, Red Lion, um, Rockwood, just... You know, I just love to sing, so I really don't care. But it's more like a jazzy kind of vibe, a jazzy, like, soulful kind of vibe. Just a guitar, like, very, like, simple. Just me and, like, a guitar. <laughs> I'm sure a lot of your fans on, from Orange is a New Black will love to follow you there. Totally, and I'm what? releasing a Selena um, song Wait, for her 20th death anniversary. I'm obsessed with her, and um, her music is still alive. I did a video, and I was singing her music on the streets, which was really scary for me, right? And um, little kids were singing along with me, older people, and it just, I was crying. Like, after, I was like, wow, her music is still happening. Like, so it was beautiful. It's como la flor. That's I'm gonna release it in that September. Song. That's so fun. Um, and finally, one of the another thing when I first remember, I was like, this girl's face is so. Oh gosh, <laughs> I know where this is going. <laughs> like, I know. That's and I, was like, and I know. <laughs> but it's just so funny that you yeah. never quite know where people's journeys will lead them, right? Absolutely. Were you in Miami at that time? I was. People in may not know Miami. this. I'm sorry, but that's fine. Yeah. I was going through a little stage <laughs> in my life, and um, that happened. But um, it was fun. I don't regret anything. Yeah, yeah, I think it's fun. I don't know. I've always wanted to know what Kourtney Kardashian tasted like. <laughs> um, anyway, but Jackie, thank she you so much. She like a, like a, what did she kiss? Like, just like a boy, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> it, I don't, it just felt right <laughs> at the time. Well, I love it. Well, thank you so much, Jackie, for being here. Of course, thank we you for having cannot me. wait to see more of Orange the New Black and see what music's out there that comes yeah. that you produce. And also, of course, your new EP that's coming up soon. You thank can, of you. course, catch every episode of Orange is the New Black only on Netflix and keep up with Jackie's music at JackieCruz.com.